Dude, what's going on? That's it, it's ruined. I can't find any. Gear tasting's over before it even began. Can't find any what? We're out of LaCroix. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I wanted to start talking about what we came back with from our alumni muster. So we did a muster conclave, which was an alumni only event, and we decided to do something a little different this year. We went camping. Um, obviously there was some more stuff that went on, like Whiskey Land Nav and some other stuff that we came up with this year. But I wanted to just kind of decompress a little bit after I brought everything back just to kind of show you what I took and it's a great way to like give you guys some feedback on what worked and what didn't. And you know, we had that episode on glamping and that's definitely what we did at this muster. So this is, this is kind of my pile, if you will, of what we came back with. So I want to just briefly talk about that stuff. So um, first off, I'll get the big stuff out of the way. This is my Oz tent, this huge, big monstrosity that barely fits on my roof rack. So when I set up the Oz tent, the initial part of it, when you pop it out, sets up in less than 30 seconds. So I really like it for that feature alone. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's definitely a glamping tent, as you can tell. That's, it's huge. It probably weighs, I honestly don't know what it weighs, but if I were to guess, maybe 30 pounds or something like that. But um, it's, it's fairly easy to set up. I have a, an accessory, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a, overhang that can be set up with some sidewalls that I have on this but uh, it's very easy everything is self-contained um, I did want to make a note real quick too that everything that you guys have at home one suggestion I would I would give you guys is that if you have the ability this of course zipper is all the way over here if you have the ability to purchase some extras one thing I would highly recommend keeping in almost everything that you do, um, hopefully it's right up at the top here, of course. So I keep this little broom in there with it because I'm super anal retentive about cleanliness and other stuff like that. And I also keep a mallet. So these mallets are available I don't know, I think Coglins makes them or something like that, one of those outdoor supply companies, but I have multiples of these. And I keep one in almost every tent or thing that I have that needs to have stakes pounded into the ground. Now, obviously for like backpacking tents, I don't have those, but I would highly recommend keeping things like that um, if you have the ability to and can afford it because it really helps cut down on the amount of stuff you have to bring. You know that, hey, I've got everything I need to assemble this tent within the bag I've got everything I need to clean it with. I've got, you know, a mallet to hammer in the stakes. You don't have to worry about grabbing that kind of stuff when you're about to head out the door. You can just grab the tent and know, hey, I have absolutely everything that I need for that. But I did kind of make a mistake and forget bedding, so I had to buy some sheets at Walmart. So take, take, take that as you will and with a grain of salt, but I try to do that at least. That's my, one of my big lessons learned is um, put bedding on a packing list. But... So that's the tent. Um, this Coleman stove that I took was excellent. Uh, I made coffee on this every morning and I basically used an AeroPress and it worked out fantastic. I brought these lanterns, but I never used them. We, uh, <laughs> we actually bought some tiki torches at Walmart, which turned out to be really cool to have there and provided a bunch of light and it was fantastic. Um, Took some extra gas just in case. Obviously that kind of always travels with me when I'm on a road trip. Um, these chairs that I talked about before from REI, um, I really like them. They held up well and they were pretty comfortable to sit in, but the squeak just is super annoying. I mean, it sounds like I'm farting every time I sit down on the chair. So that, uh, that's kind of a, a detriment or a, a negative to using those. Um, these water jugs worked out fantastic. Um, no leaking from what I could tell. Uh, it took four of those, six gallons. We used three of them, so we used 18 gallons of water uh, to do things um, from everything to dishes to uh, washing and, and everything in between. I had bought some uh, spigots, spigot attachments to go on the end of this so I could flip one up and use it as a hand wash station. 
Um, but the problem with that is that they didn't fit right and I never checked them before I left, so that's another lesson learned. Um, Got to return those to Amazon now. But you want something with a valve. It's, it's really easy to have something with a valve and you can just twist it on and wash your hands. That, uh, that really pays dividends if you can remember that when you go camping. Um, other, other things, um, this is the, this is the uh, cot that I have. It's pretty big as well, but it's, uh, it's padded and it's, it's well sized. It's probably almost like, it's almost like sleeping on a, a full size bed in length. But again, very heavy, kind of one of those glamping things. I did bring along this Nemo shower that I had just bought, but I never even set it up and used it. I just kind of dealt with three days of camping and not taking a shower. So one of these days I will use that. Um, this thing was awesome. This is the, the Kelty Base Camp Kitchen. That's something that I, I really like using. It was nice to have everything organized and, and uh, in true glamping fashion. Uh, this was a table that we have too. This was in the Whiskey Lounge. Uh, it's made by Kelty as well. It uh, gives you that nice bling color too. You got your gold table. And then everywhere I go when I go camping, um, I always try to take a flag. So this is our do-it-yourself, take-it-with-you flagpole kit. Um, it's got stakes in it and there was a mallet in here. I'm not sure where that ran off to, but I, I've assembled this in my front yard a long time ago, and maybe I can do that on a future gear tasting, show you guys how this is assembled. But I used some eye bolts and drilled right through these aluminum posts and attached uh, some natural fiber rope so that I could tie taut line hitches and actually put out some guy lines to make sure this stays upright during wind and everything. So it's worked out perfectly for me, and I can uh, do this as a little DIY one day, I'm sure. But that's kind of the, the overarching gear stuff. Some of the smaller stuff, these were invaluable. These little Lysol wipes were great for wiping down tables. I was glad we had them. Um, this is that three bucket system I think I'd mentioned before. So you have one with hot soapy water, you have one with clean rinse water, and then you have one on the end with uh, cold, clean, uh, water with a little cap full of bleach. And I love these little Nalgene bottles. These are perfect for keeping bleach in. Obviously it doesn't eat through the bottle and it keeps a really nice tight seal. And I've never had any problems throwing this in a bag and um, hoping it doesn't leak. It just doesn't, which is good. Um, hand sanitizer, obviously some dish soap. Uh, this was the pace line that we used when we did some land nav. Pace lines are important to put out so you know how far or how many paces you get in 100 meters. Uh, this is a little MSR cook set that I take. It's pretty heavy for backpacking, but I like taking it for glamping. Obviously a plate and a little titanium snow peak spork that I like. Uh, that was the stuff I ate with. Then of course, old glory right there. And this is the, uh, the Nemo Philo pillow. I actually took it apart to wash it. And this is, it's kind of an interesting look at this. It's basically a piece of foam uh, held in along with the air up bladder, which is actually a pretty nice way to sleep and it kind of compresses and this is a stuff sack and it folds up into itself. Um, I highly recommend those. Those are pretty cool. I uh, brought my helmet and night vision, but we had a full moon, so I didn't really take much advantage of having night vision there. I just had a little PVS-14. And then this is kind of the, the kit I used when we were out on land nav exercises and other things. I wound up dummy cording the crap out of just about everything. Of course, I've talked about that before, but um, after the first time my radio fell off, I decided it would uh, be a good idea. Actually, it was the second time my radio fell off, but should have known better. Um, yeah, I've talked about rig before, but we actually went over a lot of GPS stuff at this muster and showed everybody how to set preferences inside their GPS and use waypoints properly and things like that. So we actually set out a land nav course and then let everyone go back and navigate it. Um, so obviously GPS is instrumental to marking locations, giving everyone an eight digit grid and letting them plot the points on a map and navigate to them. So that was kind of cool to show them how that's set up. And I already spilled my coffee once back there. I This is kind of an underappreciated piece of kit. I keep a little, you know, kind of, uh, 
I don't know, microfiber cloth in my pocket to wipe my nose on and clean hands or something like that, anything. Uh, wipe sweat sometimes. Uh, this is a great thing. I like it because it's not, it doesn't hold water, which is good. Um, just some, kind of some other random stuff in here. Uh, EDUs, I'm obviously a fan of Masquerade, as you guys know. <laughs> this is my glamping fan. I set this up in my tent just in case and actually didn't need it. <laughs> So put all those batteries in there for nothing. And that's kind of it. Uh, clothes were a redundancy. Um, brought rain gear in case it rained and it never did. Um, then old trusty Loa Renegades. These are the leather line boots. These are my absolute favorite things to wear when I'm out in the field. Um, propane tanks for the stove. I actually only used pretty much one because I brought a bunch of extras for the lanterns we never used. Um, had a, had a big tarp just in case it rained so we could put something up to get under. Uh, there was a little pavilion there, but I wasn't sure how that would work uh, or whether we'd be able to get that, and we did. Um, and then always when you're camping and you have a fire, bring a fire bucket. Hey guys, one thing I wanted to mention that I wanted to highlight in gear tasting today is this knot tying board. This was a DIY project that we did a long time ago on YouTube, and we will link to the article and video down in the description of the video, but this is something you guys can make at home, and it's a great way to practice knots as well as kind of uh, induce a knot tying competition between friends, or this is a great thing to teach your kids on. Uh, this is actually inspired by something they had at a Boy Scout camp I went to with my son. So this is uh, working left to right. It's basically a square knot, and down at the end it's a, a bow line and then these are four different hitches so you have you have a clove hitch you have two half hitches you have a timber hitch and then a taut line hitch so i'm going to just tie them real quick so you can kind of see i don't know how my speed is going to be but we'll give it a shot all right Timber hitch. I should have said these as I was going again. And then taut line hitch. And then bow line, which is pronounced the correct way. All right, so again, square knot, clove hitch, two half hitches, timber hitch, taut line hitch, and bow line. So it's really kind of cool to, to tie this and um, it's really easy to make. You're basically just screwing into dowel rods that have been pre-drilled and this is like a big eight foot, I think it's, I think it's two, two by eight or I don't know. Anyway, four by eight, I'm not sure. But it's a big piece that all it takes is one cut at like a Home Depot. You can buy this um, at length. I think it's, it's probably eight foot in length and they just chop it in half and then the rest of the stuff you can really do at home with a handsaw and the drill. Um, and some spray paint if you want to paint it, you don't have to, but um, super easy to put together. Just get some good uh, climbing rope that's not too expensive that you can cut down like this and these are just tied through the back. Super easy to make. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Today we are going to address a different kind of question, one that came to us via snail mail. Kind of cool. Um, somebody from Vermont sent in a question, says, Dear Brian, hope this gear tasting question finds you. I do not use Twitter nor Facebook, so I choose an analog method instead. I think it's pretty cool. I'm trying to update my range bag setup and would like to know how you and your super organizational mind approach this. Any ideas, suggestions for range bags, products? Best, Harrison. Uh, sure thing. So I know we've talked about the shooting range backs in the past. I will go over this a little bit, but I just gathered some stuff to give you a general idea of what kind of things that I take to the range whenever I go. Um, and depending on how extensive it is, I'll usually take a, some kind of a loadout bag that you can see up here. So that's, uh, that's typically what I take. 
that uh, mass gray LBT bag that I took to muster that I showed earlier, that's usually what I use because I like the smaller size. Um, this accessory bag actually came from an old uh, tactical assault gear bag and I liked how they had these kind of removable mesh bags inside of the inside of the uh, the roller bag so I use this for clips and stuff so not magazines clips so literally binder clips so that's how I oh the other the other thing I don't have is the actual wooden staves that I take to uh, attach the ipsic targets to but I like this method this was shown to me years ago and you can buy these big binder clips. Um, it's great to find like a discount store to buy them at that sells the big ones because you can get them for cheaper. But as you can see, I have tons of these. Occasionally, they do get holes put through them. Um, not naming any names. I think we all did this. Uh, but they're great. They're easily, they're cheap. They're easy to replace. And it's much better than stapling a bunch of stuff around. Um, that's really the best thing that I've found so far to attach Ipstix targets to those. So, one second. These are the target stands that I usually bring. So these are from Target Barn, I think. It's the TS1. And these are, these are really great. You can actually stake them down uh, when it's windy because they do tip over with the Ipstix targets on them. But you just stick those uh, pieces of lumber in there. They, those are easy to buy and really cheap at a, a Home Depot or something, but I have four of these and I'll take them to the range and, you know, set up different drills and targets like this and they're, they're great for that and they're fairly lightweight. I mean, it's all angle iron, so it, it can be a little heavy, but they're actually pretty nice and easy to take. But, you know, along with that, when, I've, when I stand these up, that's what I have these for. I do also have a staple gun, you know, just in case, depending on, you know, where I go at the range. So. Everything kind of fits within the construct of this, but as you can see, it's still kind of, I gotta grab this bag and this bag and remember to take this and things like that. Um, while I still haven't developed a range bag checklist or a range time checklist, if you will, uh, someone did email in one of theirs and um, I still haven't gotten around to looking at that as a template to construct one yet, but I pretty much know what to grab, so I'm not really, I'm not really hurting for needing a list because everything is pretty much squared away. Like if I'm taking AR mags, you know, I'll use one of our gizmo bags and just grab one. So this is a great way to organize mags. And I keep those up here so I can just grab a bag of mags depending on the platform I'm shooting. So one is, you know, AR mags, one's AK mags, you know, so on and so forth. Um, precision rifle stuff, I only have a couple of mags, so they're easy to just put in a, a bin with all the other precision rifle stuff um, and that I'm grabbing anyway, like Kestrel and things like that. I always have a trauma kit with me. Typically something that's bigger than just a blowout kit, but I've got blowout kits in the vehicle too, and I've always got my vehicle with me. Um, then I like to take this too to measure out distance because I'm kind of anal retentive when it comes to distances and trying to eyeball it sometimes isn't always the best thing to do, especially when you're talking about precision rifle stuff and making sure you've got a hundred to zero at and things like that if, if that does come up. Um, and then Everything else either fits in one of those uh, roller bags or in some kind of kit bag. Uh, this is the, the GORUCK, what is it? They just call it their 32 liter kit bag. Um, I like these because they have some internal organization pockets inside too. So I'll typically take something to, to hold random accessories that don't kind of fit within the scope of this stuff. But that's pretty much how I organize stuff. So the, this is the shooting range box from MTM Case Guard. Um, as you can see, I still have not figured out a way to keep things from leaking. Um, for some reason, I still get crap that leaks all the time, no matter what kind of oil or solvent that I use. Everything leaks, and I wind up probably cleaning this thing out probably, uh, I don't know, six times or so during the year because everything leaks. And um, I would love to find some lubrication manufacturers that care enough about the bottles that they make not to let them leak, but hey. Uh, maybe that's something that I need to invent one day. But this is just kind of an amalgamation of different stuff I need on the range, whether it's batteries or bore snakes or tools, punches, uh, cleaning rods. It, it doesn't matter. This, this kind of covers everything that I've ever had to use. Um, I do have that spare parts box that I won't grab right now, but I take that whenever I'm doing kind of a big event with multiple guns. I like to try to help people out if they have problems uh, getting their gun running or something like that. Um, and in the bottom is 
uh, just some kind of various stuff. I always take dummy cord and paracord and you know, I've always got a pair of shears and tape and riggers rubber bands and cleaning supplies, spare springs, you name it. Um, this is great too because they've got these inserts that allow you to uh, put these and kind of rest your rifle in here so you can actually use this as a workbench too, which is something I like. Um, this is an AR uh, thing that somebody sent me a while back so you can actually drop your your lower onto this in the magwell and you know work on your AR like that too. Great for cleaning. You can just set this up, you know, open up your upper and you know use the uh, cleaning rod and stuff like that. Um, and then I also swear by these things too. This is the uh, this is the fix it stick kit. These are great for uh, torque. If you if you have something like a precision rifle that requires certain torque settings that you don't want to uh, that you want to make sure you're accurate with. It's one of the best things out there for that because it's like socket wrenches that are actually torque wrenches. So each one of these has a built-in torque setting. So this is a 65 inch pound torque bit so that you can basically stick, you know, an attachment on the end of that and this into the wrench and you know the exact torque settings when it clicks. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the range accoutrements, if you will and the stuff that I typically take the range. Hopefully that gives you an idea for organization and hope I answer your question. All right guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember to use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network and we'll get your question answered right here on the show or you can even send snail mail like our friend from Vermont Harrison did. Um, send us a postcard if you want, if you're not on any social media networks. And then also, if you like what we're doing here on Gear Tasting, please consider joining our Patreon page patreon.com slash ITS tactical. We've got some pretty cool goals to allow us to upgrade some of the stuff that we're doing here and we can only do so with your support. Um, it means a lot to us if you consider that. We got some cool perks to give you too. And if you were admiring the fancy steady camera work that uh, Rob was doing on this video is brought to you by our 100 Patreon subscribers we already have. Thanks to that we were able to purchase a cool steady cam mount and it's working pretty good. Thanks for watching.